I feel like immigrants, you know, when we come to a, a different country, most of our parents have told us or, you know, our elders have told us, like, be invisible, don't get into trouble, mm. don't attract attention, just do your work, just survive, because that's what they had to do when they came to a country. They didn't know the language. Mm -hmm. They didn't know the culture, so they just kept their heads down and worked, right? That was the culture that was taught to us, but I inherently was a peacock. And I was like, somebody's trying to curb my shine here, like, you know? Look at me. But I was trying to find my confidence in Cedar Rapids. And I remember I tried to find the cafeteria, and you had to go down the spiral staircase to reach this giant cafeteria, which was like a whole floor. I remember looking down like that, and it was like a movie. And I was like, oh, those are the popular kids. Okay, okay. Where am I sitting? Everyone had their cliques. Everyone had their friends. I didn't even know how to get the food. I would walk downstairs, and I'm like kind of observing. I don't know anyone. And I got so terrified that I went upstairs. I put 50 cents in the vending machine. I got a bag of Doritos. I went to the bathroom because I didn't want to go to my next class. It was Spanish, I still remember. And I went to the bathroom, sat on the commode and ate my Doritos for lunch and cried. And I was like, this is terrifying. But I chose it and I was like, I'm going to suck it up. It's okay. I've always somehow been able to allow myself to feel broken completely. Mm -hmm either go to bed, eat a tub of ice cream or a pizza, process the feelings. And I have allowed myself that duration of that, whatever that grief is, instead of being hard on myself. And then I've also been my own champion. Like I'll dust myself off. And sometimes that time has just been lunch break. And sometimes that time has lasted three or four years. Maybe that's why I've never found a therapist is because I just kind of do that to myself. No, I, I think... give myself a hug. <laughs> You're like, I do the whole process by myself. I don't need to sit on a couch. I can do it alone. No, I really want to experience it, though. It's incredible feeling because all of a sudden you start talking about something. You're like, how did I not know this about myself? Wow. What I do love getting to know about you, though, I think this resilience you have clearly from your parents and like listening to like culturally, there was something embedded in you. But as we all realized, like our parents had something they had to go through. And then we're like a little bit better than them because yeah. as society continues to progress, we're like, were able to do a little bit more than they could. So I feel like this resilience in you is so inspirational to like listen to because I'm like, oh shit, like you felt like such an outsider. You cried with your Doritos, but then still the next day, the fact that you could have left, you could have. I could have. I could have called my mom. and But I was like, I'm going to stick like it out because I made this decision and I don't want my mom to feel like she couldn't trust me. And this is me at 13. And I wasn't, I didn't have a bad experience. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know yeah. what to do and how to make friends. And it's a new country. I always grew up speaking English, so that was never a problem. It was just the social awkwardness of I spoke differently. My accent was different. I dressed differently. I mean, I was still in jeans, but I, was, I wasn't I was cute yet. Like, yeah. I hadn't figured out what fashion was because I was in a uniform in school. Totally. Like, Do you have advice for anyone that's listening that's like, I feel like a complete outsider socially. I feel like I don't fit in. I feel like you had a very specific situation where all odds were kind of against you and you made the most. Like, what is your advice to someone that's currently going through a similar situation that you were? That I don't think circumstances or your environment can dictate how you feel. They can contribute to it it's up to you to decide how much you're taking in and how much you're leaving out this is not something again that I knew in my 20s obviously I was somehow doing it because I think my parents just like my family just taught me that resilience of bounce back up my mom says that to me she's like you're all, you've always been someone who like just bounces up and you're like oh it's okay it's okay it was a mistake I'll, I'll try it again but if you treat life like that like Whenever life has been tough, and it's been tough many times, it's been almost down and out, and you don't want to get out of bed, and you don't want to see anyone. I grew up in the public eye, so I kind of realized that my best person was me. I had to rely on my skill set. Whenever I was nervous or I was scared, I, I started focusing on whatever was the goal in that moment whether that was the relationship whether that was the movie whether that was you know whatever it might be yeah. figuring out you know how to make friends in a new school like I kind of was like okay my goal is to make friends so tomorrow I'm gonna go downstairs to the cafeteria with my bag of Doritos and just observe I have to figure out what food they feed me and where I'm sitting because I don't know anybody so like that slowly I just made solution oriented steps